All right then gang, so in this video what I'd like to do is talk about loops and we'd use loops in Svelte if ever we wanted to cycle through some data like an array and output a bit of HTML template for each item in that array of data. So the best way to learn is by example and you can see I've already cleared out all of the script and the HTML inside the main tag right here and I'm going to create a variable called people and set it equal to an array and inside that array I'm going to paste in these three objects right here. These have come from my GitHub repo over here. Woohoo! So I've pasted those in and each object represents a single person. So each object has a name, a belt color property, an age and an ID and we'll see why we have an ID later on. Svelte kind of requires this when we're using loops. So if we wanted to output a bit of template for each one of these items, what are the options? Well, we could manually do it. I could say div, and then inside there, I could do an H4, and in curly braces, I could say, well, I want the first item in the people array, so position zero, and I want to output the name, and then below that, I could output the belt color by saying people zero, and then we want the belt color property, and then we could do exactly the same thing for the other two items in the array. So this would be one, like so, and this would be two, oh, oops, two and two. Totally done all this wrong. So zero, one, and two. And that would grab this one first, then this, then this one, and output each one. So that would work, but it's not the most effective way of working. If we had 20 items in, we'd be doing this 20 times. If we had 100, 100 times, and we might not even know how much data is in the array. It might come from a database. We're not clear on how many there are, so we wouldn't know how many to output. So this is not the way we should be working. Instead, we should use a loop so we can cycle through this data, take each one of these one at a time and output a bit of template for each one. So the way we do that is by using curly braces, then hash, and then the each keyword. So this is gonna be similar to a for each loop in JavaScript. So for each one of these things, we're gonna output some data, right? Some template. So we say each and then the array name, which is people, and then as, and you can call this what you want. I'm going to call it person because it's the singular. And this is how we refer to each individual item. So at the end of that, I'm going to say forward slash each like so. And that closes the each block. So this is basically going to cycle through this people array. And it's going to look at this one first. And we can access that using the person object now because we're saying we want to refer to each item as a person. So we can output a bit of template for this person. Cycles through it the first time and person is this. The second time person is this. The third time person is this. All right. So now inside all we do is define the template we want to output for each person. So I could say div and then in there an h4 and we want to output the person dot name and then below that we want to output maybe the age and the belt color so i could do a paragraph tag and i could say person dot age and then i'll say years old comma and then i'll do person dot belt color and i'll say belt at the end so it would be something like 25 years old and black belt okay so i am now going to save that and come over here and it works awesome so that was much simpler because now we're not outputting this several times manually ourselves and also if we didn't know how many data items were in the array it wouldn't matter because it's just going to cycle through each one sequentially regardless of how many are in it okay now, when we're using each loops like this, we should also apply a unique key to each element inside our array. And we pass that unique key property to the loop. So I'm going to say right here in parentheses that we want the key property for each person to be the person.id. So something unique to each object. All right. So this means that Svelte can use that key to keep track of which DOM element is connected to which item in the array. So if I save this, it's not going to look any different at the minute. But what Svelte is doing now is linking up each HTML bit of template to each section or piece of data in the array. And it's forming that bond between the two. So each div is now linked under the hood with a specific piece of data in the array. So we're creating a link between the template parts and the array, right? 
So without that unique key, it can't provide this link or create this link under the hood. And you might run into trouble when manipulating data later on. So the effect of this might seem negligible now, but it is a good habit to get into so that Svelte can properly link our data with our DOM elements, especially when it comes to manipulating the data later on, okay? Now, there's one more thing I wanna show you over here, and that is if you wanted to add inside the each block another keyword, and it's gonna be colon else, and inside here, I'm gonna do a paragraph, and I'll say there are no people to show dot 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 so if this was ever empty at any point then it's obviously not going to output this template but if you don't want it to be blank instead it's going to show you this so if i save it and come over here at the minute it won't show it because we don't have an empty array but if i comment out all of this stuff right here and save it then we can see now it shows there are no people to show so that's how we use loops to output a bit of HTML template for each item in an array. In the next video, I'd like to show you how we can delete these items by clicking on them.